My dear friends in Christ, I told you yesterday that pastors and churches in our church body in the wells, that we often follow this series of readings that you know, gives us some specific direction in how to preach and teach the, the different Bible teachings that we have. Well, the assigned psalm that we had for church this past Sunday was from Psalms 42 and 43. And, and tonight, I wanna share with you a little something from Psalm 42. And that psalm, well, we're used to singing the psalms in our worship service. And the refrain from that psalm is something that is so beautiful. That refrain, Blessed are they who hope, who hope in the Lord. That psalm refrain gives us such a wonderful reminder. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. And well, perhaps because of our current situation, maybe we don't feel so blessed. Maybe we feel like saying, woe is me, or, or, or there was a song that went gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Maybe it seems as if that's what we'd rather be singing instead of blessed are they who hope in the Lord. But think about how blessed we are. We are so blessed because we have a savior from sin. We have God's grace and love. We have the forgiveness of sins. Our names, well, they're written in the book of life. We can look forward to eternal life in heaven. So, so that means that right now we're blessed as children of God and we're going to be blessed forever because what God's going to do is he's going to take us home to heaven forever where there will be no more sickness, sorrow, or pain. No viruses, nothing like that ever again. Just complete joy, complete happiness that is forever. Well, the sun, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. Well, picture the deer that's been running through the forest, or perhaps even being chased by an enemy, and after it's done running, and after it has maybe escaped from its enemy, here it finds this cool flowing stream and is able to stop and part and quench its, its thirst. Well, here we are, we're living in a sin-troubled world, and maybe we can think about how we're being chased by our enemy, and that happens to be a virus at this particular time, and, well, other problems and troubles that we face in this life. But as it says here, so my soul pants for you, O God. That's where we find relief, in our God. That's where we find our refuge and our strength. Well, the psalmist asks, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Well, maybe we can ask when and where can we find this relief? And, and well, that relief, it's in God and in his word. It's in God and in his word. And now we're in some strange times. And because of these strange times, well, that question when, well, it wasn't too long ago when, when our government leaders were telling us that we needed to limit the size of groups. And, and when that restriction first came out, I was maybe a little bit thankful at the time that I had a campus ministry and I had a church that were a little bit smaller because, well, what we could do is in those smaller numbers, we could get together and meet and continue to get relief from God and his word. And well, then the restrictions came out now that said instead, no, just stay home. 
And I guess that means that now for three weeks, we're not going to be able to get relief from God and his word. And, and of course, you know, I'm saying that facetiously. I'm saying that facetiously because what we can do is we can look on our, at our Bibles in our homes. We can look at the Bible apps on our cell phones. And well, we can also look at these YouTube services and devotions that I'm going to get out to you. And, and through those things, we can find relief from God and his word. And well, that's when, well, we can do that any time, really. Any time of the day, we can open our Bibles, look at our phones, can look at these YouTube devotions. We're so blessed because we can find that relief at any time. And, and then it says here, where can we find that relief? Well, it really is great when we can gather together with our fellow Christians within the walls of our, of our congregation here at Calvary or our campus ministry. And well, right now we can't do that. But boy, is it going to be great when we're able to gather again to worship like that. But where can we find that relief? Well, again, anywhere, anywhere. Because, well, we can take the word with us wherever we go. It doesn't have to just be in church. And, and maybe that's a good reminder for us to have, to think that it's not just in the walls of our churches that we would find relief from God and his word. Well, the psalmist asks, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? <laughs> Maybe we'd be inclined to say to the psalmist there, it should be obvious to you why we are downcast and why we are disturbed. We have this terrible virus that's out there. And, well, there are all of the other problems and troubles that are a part of living in this sinful world. Well, the psalmist gives us the answer to that question, though, when he says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Put your hope in God. Now, he's the one who, in six regular days, created the heavens and the earth, the universe, the galaxies, and all of those things. And now, since he has that kind of power that he could create all things like that, surely what God has the power to do is he has the power to get rid of that virus, get rid of it immediately. He has that power. We know that. But we also know that he has the power to make all things in this life work together for his good. So he has the power to use even something terrible like this virus to serve our eternal blessings. Yeah. He has the power to use that to maybe lead some people to him because they'll see that the answer isn't in just this life. But he has the power to use it to lead people to Christ and and as we look at something like this, well, isn't it making us look to our God all the more? And so God is using this to build us up and strengthen us in our faith. Well, I'm, I hope our government leaders and, and medical personnel are able to get us through this. But more importantly, what this psalmist is reminding us today is put your hope in God. He's the one who's going to get us through this in this life. And, well, he'll get us through this and to our eternal life in heaven. And because he's going to do that, well, the, the, then the psalmist says, I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Whether I live or die, whether you believers will live or die. What we're going to do is we're going to praise our Savior and our God. 
We're going to praise him. We're going to praise him because, well, we have his grace and love right now. And we're going to have his blessings forever. So it's not, woe is me, or gloom, despair, and agony on me. It's, blessed are they who hope, who hope in the Lord. We're so blessed because God has given us faith in Jesus, the answer to all our problems and troubles. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, as we're faced with trials and troubles, help us always to remember how blessed we are because we have Jesus. We have Jesus and he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. He's always going to bless us. He's always going to make everything in our life work together for our good. And, and what he's going to do is he's going to take us to heaven. And what he also does for us is he gives us this perfect quench for our spiritual thirst. He's the perfect answer for when we might be downcast and disturbed because, well, we have this amazing, great Savior who really can and really does take care of us. And the fact that he lived and died for us and paid for all of our sins, that's proof. Oh, how blessed are we who hope, who hope in the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this devotion. The Lord bless and keep you always.